Today we've got a crazy story of ruining a roommate's legal career. But first, I hid my ex's design sketch pad. When I was still in high school, my sister had a group of friends from school who were all beautiful and rich. It was a private school so we were all mostly comfortable. One of my sister's friends was not as comfortable. She got into the school on scholarship. The scholarship was well deserved because she was incredibly brilliant. She did very well in school and somehow still had time for all the fun activities. Her mom made dresses and she learned to do the same from her mom, so she wore beautiful clothes to all the school functions. This girl managed to go from the scholarship kid who was supposed to be all nerdy to the it girl in school. Her beauty helped too. She was smoking hot, had nice black wavy hair, and was stylish. Naturally, all the girls wanted to be like her, so she rose on the school's social ladder and started dating a popular rich kid and got into my sister's rich, beautiful, and popular circle. I was in love with her all throughout my senior year in high school. She would come over to our house with my sister and their other friends, and I would find an excuse to be there in the kitchen with them while one of them baked cookies and the others helped out. I often volunteered to take pictures of them when they went on their different adventures or even to the mall. I just wanted to be around her because I could never get enough of watching her just exist. She was drop dead gorgeous. When she started dating the popular football player in school, I almost cried. My best friend was irritated. You had months to ask her out but you chose not to, she said. What's up with that? Why did you not just go for it? I shrugged at her question. Come on, tell me she egged on. I said I just don't feel like I'm good enough for her, you know? She's so pretty. My best friend frowned and said, No offense, I know you like that girl, but she should be the one worried about not being good for you. You are cute, rich, brilliant, and did I mention rich? I rolled my eyes at my best friend. I don't have money, my parents do. Well, she shrugged and smiled. That's one thing her parents don't have. Jeez, I exclaimed, that is classist. She said, well, maybe. She's schooling in a school that allows her to meet people she would never have met if she hadn't gotten the scholarship. I may sound sick and twisted, but at least you have something going on for you that she does not. No matter how well she does or how many rich friends she garners, she'll always feel out of place. I said, you're right. That is sick and twisted. My best friend slapped me lightly on the wrist. She said, I heard her boyfriend's known for dumping girls. He never stays with one girl past three months. Maybe when he's bored with her? I said, shut up. Three months passed and my best friend was wrong. This girl and her football team player boyfriend only became even stronger. Everyone loved their relationship and it remained that way till I graduated and left for college. I met someone shortly before graduation. Well, I didn't just meet her. We had attended the same summer photography classes in the past and we kept in touch. But we soon realized we liked each other and started dating. I loved my girlfriend, of course, but I still couldn't shake off the fierce attraction I had to my sister's friend. Whenever I came home from college, I would see her again and the feelings I had for her would resurface, but I would always ignore them until I returned to campus. I hardly ever even spoke to her. My sister and her friends graduated high school too and left for college. I didn't see her again for a long time until years later at the store in my area. I was looking for tampons for my best friend. She was in town and came over to my house and needed them, so I hurriedly drove out to get some for her. I didn't know what exact product to get, and I wasn't with my phone so I couldn't text her. I walked up to the lady attendant to ask for advice when I saw my sister's friend, still looking as gorgeous as ever. Hey, I called out to her. She turned and looked at me vaguely. I was slightly embarrassed that she didn't remember me. This was someone who almost lived in my house. She was with my sister even when their other friends had left. I had a reminder of who I was. Her face lit up a little bit. You used to take our pictures all the time, she exclaimed. I thought it was funny that that was what she remembered me for, but I smiled anyway and asked how she was doing. She said, I'm okay. Do you live in the area? I told her I did, and she smiled awkwardly. I paid for the tampons and left, but just as I was about to get into my car, I decided to ask her out. I was too shy to ask her out in high school, and I never even gave myself a chance. But I wanted to at least know that I tried. I went back into the store and found her paying for her goods, so I waited outside the store for her. When she got out, I called her and asked if she wanted to get a drink later. She agreed and asked for my number. I'll call you later this evening, she promised, and we parted ways. I drove home happy and told my best friend what had happened at the store. 
I don't know, buddy, she said when I told her. I've heard very disturbing things about her and how her relationship ended with her ex. I turned my nose up in disgust. Her high school ex? Come on. My best friend shrugged it and let it go. I knew she wasn't trying to offend me. I said, look, I get why you're concerned and you think girls like her are shallow and whatnot, but she's an adult now. We both are, I assured my best friend. She didn't call that evening. I was sad about it, but I shook it off. Maybe she was seeing someone and just wanted to be polite. On Monday, I was talking to a designer I worked with at one of the retail outlets when I saw her walk in. She saw me first and waved. I smiled at her back and kept talking to the designer. When we were done, she walked up to me and placed her hand on her chest. Oh my goodness, she exclaimed. Was that? Yes, I answered before she mentioned the designer's name. She said, wow, I'm sorry I didn't call you that evening. I left town for a while and it's a long story. I said, that's fine. The offer's still open though. We went out together that night and talked about what we did after high school. She applied for a scholarship to college but didn't get it, so she couldn't go to the university she badly wanted to. Her second choice was fashion. She designs dresses and sometimes makes them. She had dreams of becoming a big time designer but was yet to break into the fashion industry. What about you? She asked. I began telling her about how I majored in economics in college but decided after graduation to pursue my true love, photography. But I could tell she wasn't interested. Her eyes were fixed on the designer. I didn't blame her, and I just told myself that she was probably just starstruck. I said, how about you call me and we get that dinner? She nodded and smiled sweetly. She said, the problem though is I lost your number. Do you mind giving that to me again? I said, how about I just take yours? She gave me hers and I went off to take pictures of the models. You mean she threw out the paper you wrote your number on? My best friend asked when I called later that night to tell her what had transpired between us. I said, no, she didn't. She lost it. Come on, it happens. They said, I don't know, buddy. It looks to me like she wasn't interested in you. But as soon as she found out you worked for a famous designer, she became interested. What exactly are you implying? I quizzed my friend in annoyance. They said, I just think... I said, I think you don't believe that she could just be interested in me. Do you think I can't get someone that attractive to go out with me? Is that it? They said, no, I promise you, that isn't it. I've just had my ears filled with different stories about her and why her relationship ended in high school. I was pissed. My girlfriend was quite judgmental. Back in high school, she always had something bad to say about girls like my sister and her friends. You need to stop this. We're not in high school anymore, I told her and hung up. The next morning, I called my girlfriend and asked if that evening was a good time for her. She affirmed that it was, and we went out together. She was just as beautiful as she was in high school. She asked me some questions about work and opened up about being constantly unhappy about not going to college. She said, I plan to go to college someday. Maybe that'll happen after I become a famous designer. I admired her ambitiousness and drive. We went out again and again. One day she mentioned for the umpteenth time that she was sick of her roommate, so I offered to let her move in. If you don't think it's too soon, I added quickly. She smiled. No, 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 I would love to move in with you. She moved in with me that week with just two suitcases. I didn't ask any questions. As soon as she moved in, I did nearly everything for her. I paid for her yoga classes and some others, and she never chipped in for rent or any of our bills. She didn't even have a job. I didn't have a problem with taking care of her. If anything, I felt grateful to be able to do those things for her. But it bothered me that she did not even want to get a job. I saw an opening for an assistant to a magazine's fashion enthusiast and showed it to her, but she declined. She felt overqualified for nearly every job. She would always ask me to introduce her to the designer I worked for, the one she saw me with the second time we saw each other again. I was reluctant to do that because I knew the man would never want to talk to someone who hadn't created anything yet or worked with a smaller designer before. She kept pressing me to do it, so I promised I would tell him about her. I told him my girlfriend would like him to see some of her designs and he agreed, albeit reluctantly too. He was going to be away for a month, but he promised he would check them out as soon as he returned to the country. My girlfriend was super excited when I told her. She must have kissed my cheeks at least 50 times that day. It wasn't until we had our first serious fight 
that it dawned on me that my ex-girlfriend had been using me all along. I returned home after spending a weekend away in a different part of town to cover a wedding and returned home to a very dirty apartment. There were dirty dishes in the kitchen sink and paper plates on the dining table. I was angry and I felt I had a right to be. My ex did nearly nothing around the house. I had a lady who cleaned for me but she didn't work on weekends. I felt it was unfair that my girlfriend did nearly nothing in the house. She didn't chip in financially so the least she could do was clean up after herself. I confronted her and she didn't take it well. What I intended to be gentle chiding turned into a heated argument. She called me selfish and controlling. I told her she was the selfish one. She only ever wanted to talk about herself, her family, her needs, wants, and that our relationship was always about her. You know, I can't wait to be a famous designer, so I'll never even have to speak to you ever again, she yelled. If I weren't in such a bad place, I would never be with someone like you. I was stunned. Too stunned to even say anything. I just went into my room and shut the door. She tried to take back what she said and apologize, but I hugged her and assured her that it was fine. I realized then that my ex thought she was doing me a favor all along by being with me. I had revealed to her how crazy I was about her back in high school and how I never stopped loving her. So she thought I was stupid and wanted to take advantage of that. The designer I worked for arrived later in the week. My ex looked everywhere for her sketch pad but couldn't find it. She asked me and of course I said I didn't know where it was. She cried her eyes out that night because she needed the sketch pad for the next morning. Later she went out and bought a new sketch pad and made some sketches but they weren't as good as the one she'd made on the sketch pad I took. Yes, I took it. As I anticipated, the designer rejected her designs. When she returned, I gave her her old sketchbook back to her. She couldn't believe I'd had done something like that to her. She tried to make a fuss, but I left the house. She was a mess when I came back. I knew she wasn't sad because I might leave her. She was just disappointed that she wasn't able to use me as she intended. When I told my sister and best friend what had happened, they laughed at me. It turned out my ex was known for using people to climb up social ladders. She knew she was pretty so she used her beauty. She did it to my sister, her football player ex, and tried to do it with me. I ended things with her soon after. She didn't fight it, she just left. I think this just goes to show relationships that are almost solely based on just beauty and just physical attraction are almost guaranteed not to work out. Also hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy crazy stories of revenge, why not hit that subscribe button down below. That said, our final story of the day is, roommate slept with my younger sister, so I made a Mrs. Bar exam. I don't have many friends. I'm not the type of person that likes to keep a wide circle of superficial friends. I prefer to keep my circle tight. This isn't because I have antisocial tendencies or anything like that. I just appreciate the importance of having a few people you share every detail of your life with. The people that know you inside and out. Your strengths and weaknesses, your wins and L's. Your main obligation to these people is to give them your love and respect. But sometimes, these people you call your friends might not reciprocate the level of respect that you've shown them. Some might even go as far as to take your respect and throw it in the trash. I had this exact experience with someone very close to me. Someone I let into my circle and put so much trust in. My roommate Barry. The dude slept with my sister and was even stupid enough to let me find out. I couldn't let that slide, so I made him pay. Expensively too. But let's start at the top. During my third year in college, I was pretty broke. College life was expensive and I didn't have any savings. Up to that time, I'd been living alone because I liked my privacy. A lot. But since I couldn't keep up with paying rent alone, I needed to find a roommate. I cringed at this idea at first because I didn't have a brother growing up. I only had a younger sister and because of this, I grew up used to having as much privacy as I could ask for. And opening myself up to change was really scary. I didn't have much of a choice at the time, so I just went with it. I put up flyers in school and online and soon enough I met with some of my potential roommates. 
I didn't find any of them suitable, but that was probably just my subconscious, not wanting to let go of my sacred privacy. I found fault in all of them, but since I didn't have a choice, I had to pick one. That one turned to six within the space of six months. We usually quarrel and bicker so much that the person just decides to leave, sometimes before their rent expires. I still hated the idea of having roommates, but as much as I did, my finances hadn't improved, so I needed to do something quickly. The next few weeks, I didn't have any takers, and I was getting worried because the landlord was most likely going to kick me out if I didn't pay on time. One bright afternoon, I took a walk in one of the parks on campus. I needed to clear my head and maybe figure out a solution to my housing situation. I sat down on one of the park chairs and just watched people. A few minutes later, someone joined me on the seat. He said hi and introduced himself. His name was Barry and he told me that he saw my ad for the shared apartment. I didn't know whether it was a blessing from heaven and I have finally found a roommate or a curse from heck and he's gonna leave like the rest. But beggars can't be choosers. Even if he was gonna leave eventually, at least he'll have one more month of air before he does. We talked for a while and then made the whole agreement. The next day he came out to check the place and he paid for six months up front. I was elated. I made up my mind that day that I was going to try to make our relationship work. I didn't have to do much. He was a really cool guy. He was clean, not a slob like the rest. He never left an empty milk pack in the fridge. He washes the dishes as soon as he was done with them. And he never left a used underwear on the bathroom floor. He was perfect. But that's not all. We shared lots of interests. Movies, games. We could keep a conversation going all day. As much as I liked Barry, there was one tiny detail about him that I wasn't really a fan of. He was a chronic womanizer. He didn't believe in the concept of a girlfriend, and I couldn't associate him with one woman because he usually had a different one every week. He used to be discreet with his escapades, and since I wasn't affected in any way, I was cool with it. Barry had just finished law school at this time, while I was finishing up my third year in accounting. He was preparing to write the bar exam. Now, I'm an accountant, and I won't claim to know much about the field of law, But what I do know is that the bar examination is where every lawyer loses their cool. They study for days on end and freak out at every turn. This wasn't the same for Barry. If anything, he even played more games. He started to party, which wasn't something he normally did, drank and hooked up with more girls in this period. I had to sit him down and talk to him because I knew he was spiraling. He told me everything was fine and he has everything under control. A few weeks later, he took the bar. I asked him for the details, but he wasn't willing to say much. All he said was that he aced it. I doubted that because I was an excellent judge of character, but I couldn't tell him this. I kept quiet, and we waited patiently for the results. Two months later, the results came in, and he failed. I think I was even sadder than he was, because if he was, he didn't show it. Instead, he went to more parties and hooked up even more. That was his escape to pretty much everything. I wasn't a therapist, so I couldn't help him. But when he got home one night, I insisted that he sees a therapist. If he didn't want to talk to me, he had to talk to someone. He told me once more that he was fine, and he wasn't bothered because the state of New Hampshire allows a single lawyer to take the bar exam four times before they couldn't take it again. I shrugged and said okay, and we waited patiently for the next bar examination to arrive. When it did, Barry reverted to exactly who he was during this last bar exam. He partied, drank, and hooked up. I was in my final year of accounting at the time. There was so much work to do, so I didn't have time to babysit him. I tried to get him away from the games one time, but he just wouldn't budge. I couldn't force him to do anything, so I just did my own thing. Barry took the bar, or should I say Barry went for the bar. I don't know if he freaked out or just didn't want to do the exam, because as he told me, he wasn't feeling it, so he left the hall for a bar. I decided that the situation had gone out of hand, and I dragged him off to see a therapist. I don't know what they talked about, but after a few more sessions, Barry appeared brighter and more willing to try. He confessed that he had always been scared about the exam. He struggled through law school. 
and he didn't think himself good enough to pass the bar. So he'd been subconsciously sabotaging himself because it would hurt more if he actually tried and failed. He decided that he was going to prepare for the third one. He still had two tries, and he was going to pass, if not the first one, then the second one. I was already preparing for my final exams when he started to prepare for the exams. We made sure to study together and just help each other. We both took our exams, and I passed with flying colors. Barry, on the other hand, failed again. But this time, it was better. He scored 262 out of 400, but the pass mark was 270. He was really happy because he never even thought he could actually score as high as that. He even cheered me up and told me that he was going to do better in the next one. I was actually scared at first because that was his last try, but he was pretty confident in his skills, so that was good enough. I started an internship at an accounting company not very far from the college, so I didn't have to move out of the apartment. Barry had a day job as a paralegal in a law firm, so we both got pretty busy as we waited for the next bar exam, which was due in three months' time. A few weeks later, I received a letter from home. It was my younger sister, Megan. She was transferring to my college to start her second year of business administration. She needed a place to stay, and since I stayed close by, she wanted to stay with me. Okay, this was a tough decision for me. It wasn't supposed to be because she's my sister, right? But it was exactly because she was my sister that I had the problem. If I stayed alone, I would have let her stay, but as I've said earlier, Barry was a chronic womanizer, and in the two years I've known him, he only got worse. Whenever he sets his sight on a woman, he never stops till he's had her on his bed. I didn't want this for my sister because she could be immature and impulsive sometimes, so I promptly denied her request. That same day, a few hours later, I got a phone call from my mom, yelling at me to take my sister in. I told her about my roommate's situation, of course I left out the womanizing bit, but eventually she decided that she should stay with me for a month, just to give her enough time to get an apartment. I said okay. That day I went home to have a talk with Barry. I told him I was having my sister over and he could have any other girl in the whole world, but he shouldn't dare touch my sister. He laughed it off at first and even made some jokes about waiting for the right appropriate amount of days before making a move on her. When he saw that I was serious, he agreed. He said something like, A bro's sister is off limits to all bros, except if the bro in question gives consent. I didn't know what that meant, but it sounded like he was going to respect my wishes, and that was good enough for me. Megan arrived a few days later, and I introduced her to Barry. I didn't sense any tension between them in the first instance, but I wasn't going to let my guard down. Megan decided to cook dinner, and we all chatted for a while. It was all pretty formal. Megan was supposed to sleep on the couch, but I gave her my bedroom. The living room was in the center of mine and Barry's bedroom, so if either of them gets out of the room, I would know. Nothing happened for the next few days. Barry and Megan didn't even become close enough to become friends. They were just civil with each other, and I was happy about this. Unknown to me, it was all an act. One night, I went to get a drink of water in the kitchen, but Barry was already there. I wanted to say hi, but I saw him holding my pack of orange juice, so I stayed still. I thought he was stealing my juice. I wanted to catch him in the act, but that was not what he was doing. He slipped a few tablets inside the juice then put it back inside the fridge. I tiptoed back to my room before he could turn and see me, but I came back later. I checked the pill sachet in the trash. It was a sleeping pill. I didn't understand why he would want me to be asleep, so I decided to find out. I threw out the pack of orange juice, and I bought the same exact pack. I made sure to drink it in his presence. I first lay on the couch that night and pretended to be asleep, and a few hours later, Barry came out of his room and crept into mine. I sprang up from the bed and went to the door, and I could hear them, going at it as loudly as they could because they thought I was asleep. My first instinct was to barge in there and throw my sister out and then go back in to give Barry the beating of his life, but that wouldn't be satisfying in the long run. Megan was going to leave in a few days so there's no need to cause friction in the relationship we shared. I decided to bide my time and execute my revenge as cleanly as possible, and I knew exactly how to do it. 
After Megan got an apartment and left, Barry began studying for the bar exam, which was taking place in a month's time. I dedicated my whole weekend to staying home and helping him study. I even set up, mocked questions for him, and he did really well all the time. He was so sure he was going to pass this time, and he would have, if he hadn't slept with my sister. You see, Barry betrayed my trust when he spiked my drink, just so he could sleep with my sister. Funny thing is, I don't know how long it had been happening and how many times he'd spiked my drink, but the fact that he could do that to me, after everything we had gone through together, it really hurt me. So I decided to hurt him back, by making him miss his bar exam. I decided to do that with the same sleeping pills he used for me. Talk about poetic justice. I bought the pills from a nearby pharmacy and spiked his almond milk and cranberry juice. That night before the exam, we did some late night studying and he drank his cranberry juice while I drank my orange juice. The exam started by 9 the next day, but Barry didn't wake up till 1.30. He called me freaking out that he'd slept in and that I should have woken him up. I told him I left really early to get started on some work and I couldn't wake him up at that hour. He didn't even bother to join the second day of the exam. There was no use. He'd already failed for the fourth time, thereby ruining his chances of getting a license to practice in New Hampshire. His only options were to move to a new state and maybe sit for the bar there or stay a paralegal for all of his life. Barry decided to move. I had a job now. I could pay for the apartment without him, so it was fine. Till today, Barry didn't know why he overslept or that I knew about him and my sister, and that was fine with me. I knew how much he wanted to become an attorney in New Hampshire, and it felt so good to take it from him. I mean, in the end, if the sister wanted to, to the point where they were okay with OP getting sleep-pilled, I think maybe OP should have just let them make those screw-up decisions amongst themselves. In the end, what did OP really get out of this besides some, like, maybe petty satisfaction? Doesn't change anything, they still got sleep filled, their sister still slept around, and there's 49 other states for Barry to keep on trying, bound to make it work somewhere. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another absolutely crazy story of revenge, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.